What's up guys? Uh, continuing on with the CD collection, uh, picking up where we left off on the last video last week. Uh, we are still with the band Fluids. Uh, this one is entitled Not Dark Yet. This was released last year through Hell's Headbangers. Hell's Headbangers. Um, very, I mean this says Not Dark Yet. It's very dark themed, brutal death grind. I'm sure most of you following this channel are familiar somewhat with the band fluids um whether you like them or not i'm sure you've heard something very disturbing stuff the the very the intro on the very first track is uh is very disturbing and, and the but the whole album is good i like it it's you know more of that mortician worship but it is a good release uh next up i'm going to pronounce it right this time uh this is fetal juice with gluttony when i received this uh, album i got it in a bundle deal from Gorehouse Productions and I was pronouncing it Fotal Juice but I found out that uh, it is pronounced Fetal Juice so there we go I learned something getting better as long as you learn from your mistakes it's okay to make mistakes uh, death metal hinges on that brutal death metal side of things good stuff I, I, I dig this quite a bit I actually have this shirt somewhere uh, packed up but good stuff there from Gorehouse Productions and Fetal Juice. Uh, next up, we have a atmospheric kind of black and doom band out of France. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm assuming you pronounce it the same way. Uh, the Fetal Mind is spelled Fotal for us folks here in the in in the U.S. But uh, I believe it would be pronounced if if Fetal Juice is pronounced Fetal Juice. I'm going to say this is the Fetal Mind with um, Supreme Kimonimit, yeah. I believe this is their debut full length. Uh, this came out in 2009. It is one of the early uh, Hypnotic Dirge records releases. I think this is number 11 out of the Hypnotic Dirge catalog. Uh, the, it, it's nice to see a label with that kind of longevity. Uh, this is when they were still pretty early on in, in getting that label up and going. I think they're up to almost, if they haven't broke 100 releases on that label now, they've got to be very close on it. So, uh, pretty good stuff there. It's not my favorite album from them. Th this next one is. This one is entitled The, G the Grand Contraction. And I, I dig this one quite a bit. It has that kind of, it has times where it feels like atmospheric black metal. Uh, has some post metal elements going on in this and some doomy stuff as well. I dig this one quite a bit. This one was also released on Hypnotic Dirge Records in 2010, so it has been out uh, for some time. I believe I got this in one of the, I've mentioned it before in in these in these uh, CD collection videos. Fossil Dungeon used to do these these uh, mystery boxes. I got a couple of them before they stopped doing it. I don't even know if Fossil Dungeon is still. Um, a distro or anything anymore. They had an eBay store back in the day that they did these uh, mystery boxes, and it was just black metal and death metal mainly. And they were some of the best mystery boxes that I ever got. I do miss those quite a bit, and I think I got that in one of those. Uh, next up, we have some melodic uh, death doom out of Chile. This is Fog with La Niebla de los Animas. Yeah. Uh, kind of atmospheric, uh, melodic doom death. I, I do enjoy this quite a bit. Very melancholic stuff. I got this from, I believe I ordered this from Paragon Records. Uh, I have featured this album in a Seven Deadly Spins um, video in the past. I love the, the back where it says music from the end of the world. It, it's very fitting. Uh, next up, we have some, I hate the, the term Viking metal, uh, but it is folk slash Viking metal. This is Folk Earth with Rulers of the Sea. This is an international band, has members from all over. Um, this is the only Folk Earth album I own. I have this, and then I have some Folkodia albums that I'm going to show next. And it has a lot of interlapping members and a very uh, similar soundscape, just folky. Uh, folk metal. I mean, a folky Viking themed folk metal. This uh, has little hints of death metal, little hints of power metal. It's it's a little all over the place. It's okay. I mean, it's just kind of middle of the road. There's nothing I've heard better 
folk metal bands that I've heard worse. And then, as I was saying, we have uh, Folkodia, I guess I pronounced that right, with uh, In a Time of Legends. This was released, I believe these were all released on Stygian uh, Crypt Productions out of Russia. Pretty big on folk metal over there, it seems. There's a lot of folk, folk metal releases that come out of Russia. There we go. And then I have one more from that band. This one is entitled Battle Cry. And you can tell that they're kind of related projects the folk earth and the folkodia just from the the uh the logos the band logos that they, they are very similar and even sound wise they are very similar as well i don't know i don't know why they did the two separate projects because they were releasing material right at the same time um i i don't know what the politics or thought process was behind that but i mean it i mean it's it's okay. I mean, it's pretty good stuff, but it's 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 not you know groundbreaking. It's not the best folk metal that I've ever heard. Uh, next up, we have a release from good old Chug Core. I'm not sure whatever happened to the label Chug Core. I, I, I know uh, there was some kind of uh, um, shadiness or something that went down there towards the end. But this is footage of a Yeti with uh, purging the human condition. Death Core. Uh, I always look back at this release this e i guess it's an ep i look back at this ep more fondly i remember I, like i'm always let down when i revisit it and listen to it because for some reason in my memory i always remember it being better than what it actually is and then when i get the urge like hey i want to go listen to that and then i pull it out and it's like man this this isn't as good as i remember and it happens every time like i i'm sitting here right now in my mind thinking i'm being too hard on it and uh, cause I was like, you know what? It, it, I remember this, you know, being pretty good. And I think I, I'm still salty too. Cause I did the pre-order with the CD and the shirt and they sent the shirt and it looked nothing like what they had mocked up on the pre-order. And uh, yeah, so I'm still salty about that too. I, I, I'm holding a grudge. Uh, next up we have some black and death metal. Uh, I forget where this band is from. Um, Ireland maybe, I, I'm thinking they're from Ireland. Uh, this is For Ruin with their debut full length, December. Black and Death Metal doesn't really tell you much. Uh, it, there's, especially when it comes to this band, that, that's not really, I mean, that's what they're kind of tagged as is Black and Death Metal. Um, yeah, that's there. I mean, they have the definite black metal uh, feelings going on, and they have, I mean, definitely Death Metal. Death Metal is probably the prevalent. Uh, genre that they have there's some progressiveness and stuff going on at times on this this one's pretty good but i think their second album is probably my favorite this one is entitled last light this one feels more i would feel more comfortable on this one genre tagging it as black and death metal that that seems to be the 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 main focus of this album it doesn't just deviate and and do other things too too often on this on this particular release and that may be why why i like it i don't know but for out of uh, the three albums of theirs that i own this one is definitely my favorite the last album is pretty decent too this one is entitled entitled adder angelus this one's pretty good but i, I think just my my personal uh feelings I, I like that second album the most but this if i had to put them in order or rank them if i had to this would be probably my second favorite next up we have some hardcore punk from boston massachusetts this is for the worse with uh the chaos continues got this in that bridge nine uh records grab bag mystery box deal that i got a little while ago uh this came out in 2004 so this one has been out for quite some time a uh, pretty decent Th this one stands a little bit better than some of the the other stuff that i got in that grab bag i did uh i did like this one a little bit more it hardcore is just something it's not really in my wheelhouse i, I just I, I i'm not super knowledgeable on it uh, i wish i was i mean because there are some hardcore 
acts that I do. I, I, as we go through this, you'll see that there's hardcore sprinkled in the collection, but it's just, I'm not knowledgeable enough on that to, to speak just too terribly often, but that too, too terribly much, but that, that was a pretty good release there. Uh, next up, we have a traditional heavy metal, uh, the kind of hard rocky at times, featuring members of um, King Diamond and Merciful Fate. I just went blank there for a second. This is uh, Force of Evil with uh, Black Empire. This is the only... Man, I sounded... I, I know my accent was thick on that. I apologize. I, I just like heard what I said in my head. This, let me try that again. This is Force of Evil with Black Empire. Uh, pretty good. They have some other albums out, and I do enjoy those. But as far as their full, as as far as the uh, this project goes, this is probably my favorite of all of their releases. It is the only one that I own. Uh, traditional heavy metal, very riff heavy. Traditional heavy metal goes into that hard rock territory quite quite often, but it is still a pretty good release. Moving on, we have some death metal. Uh, we have this is a band out of Brazil. Uh, this is Forceps with Mastering Extinction. Uh, this was released on Severed Records. Pretty good. Uh, teeters into the brutal portion of death metal at times. Uh, very technical sounding stuff. I like it. it has it definitely has that South American uh, death metal flare going on on this as well so I can get behind that but uh, a pretty pretty solid release there from forceps uh, we have some black and sludge out of Texas this is for bold for bold with their uh, self-titled EP I picked this one up last year I found I discovered this band last year and I picked this up and their their newest EP at this and I believe I picked them up at the same time this one's pretty good uh, but I was just head over heels in love with that EP they put out last year. So this one kind of got uh, put on the back burner. It wasn't listened to nearly as much as it probably deserved. But I also picked up this one. This one is the, the Pit of Suffering. This was on my end of the year list last year, despite being an, an EP, because it is that good. Uh, I wore this thing out when, when it was released, and I still find myself uh, reaching for it from time to time. If you're into that kind of black and sludgy type stuff, I think you will dig this one. Has that, that Texas feel going on as well. Uh, the title track, The Pit of Suffering, I absolutely love that song. So great stuff there from Forbode. Uh, next up, we have some black metal out of Australia. Uh, this is kind of nature themed, as a lot of black metal is. I wouldn't put it into the the atmospheric black metal i know a lot of atmospheric black metal bands fall into that uh, super nature theme this has those nature things but it i i wouldn't i wouldn't peg it as a uh atmospheric black it, it has little hints of that has little hints almost of pagan black metal going on or even possibly uh ambient black metal at times as well but this is forest mysticism with a harken this is just a three track ep uh released on cold ways music this was limited to 300 copies they're not numbered i don't believe i'm pretty positive it's not numbered yeah i'm not going to pull the disc out just because i hate these little cd wallet type deals but with it being an EP, I don't mind it nearly as much as uh, getting full links in those in those little cheap EP. Uh, I mean, in those little cheap digi wallets. Uh, next up, we have some black and death metal out of Chicago. Uh, this is some of the stuff that was in like Red Stream Records' heyday. This is Forest of Impaled with uh, Demon Void. This one leans uh, a bit more into the black metal realm than some of the other uh, Forest of Impaled material. Pretty solid release. Actually, all three of their full links are, are solid in my opinion. I do enjoy all three of their full links. This one does have a bit more of that black metal vibe going on than some of their latter material. Uh, next up is one that has a hefty, it, uh, it, it finds like the, it has a hefty dose of black metal and, and death metal both, but it kind of finds that happy medium. Uh, this is Force of Impale with, with Forward the Spears. This is probably my favorite of their full lengths. 
I like this one quite a bit. It is definitely my most listened to Forest of Impaled album that I own. Then I have their last before they split up. This one was entitled Rise and Conquer. This one kind of fell flat for me. Uh, I think I enjoyed the first two a bit more than this one. I don't know. I don't. I can't. And I can't really uh, pinpoint what it was for this one. That it just didn't. It didn't hit me the way that the the first two uh, full lengths did. I, and I still don't know what exactly it is. There's just something about it that I, it's just not nearly as memorable to me as the other two. Uh, next up, we have some kind of progressive black metal, avant-garde black metal out of the UK. This is um, A Forest of Stars with a shadow play for Yesterdays. There's a lot of going on on anything that A Forest of Stars releases. There, I mean, even the artwork, there's just layers and layers of sound on these albums. Uh, so much so that it can be a chore sometimes listening to this. Uh, definitely something that I have to be in a mood for because I, when I listen to it, I, I have to listen very closely. You have to actively listen to something like this. It's not something you can put on in the background and just go about your business and, and, and not want to pay attention to. It's just with it being layers and layers and layers of sound, you want to kind of pick it apart and, and pull things out. So it definitely has to be something I'm in the mood for. I only have that one and the follow-up to that entitled... Uh, beware the sword you cannot see and same thing with this one i mean you see those artworks going on their artworks mimic their music almost perfectly on their albums because there's just so much so much to try to take in all at once it can be a bit overwhelming i do enjoy the band and uh, i do enjoy this stuff it just for me it has to be something that i have to be able to invest the time into when i'm listening to it and i i just have to be in the mood to be able to do that uh, next up, we have some folk music. Uh, this is some acoustic folk music featuring uh, Aaron Carey of Nechachwan. Uh, this is Forest of the Soul with Restless in Flight. Uh, this is a stellar, stellar release. It's 14 tracks. I know it has some bonus tracks, but it uh, just acoustic, folky goodness. And if you're familiar with Nechachwan, you know that they have those acoustic type passages and those folky passages within their their black metal albums and this I mean they do it well on those black metal albums if that's something that you like those portions of those albums I would check out Forest of the Soul because it's just more of that folky goodness uh, next up this is a so I think I believe this band's out of Russia uh, kind of atmospheric doom metal has some black definite black and vibes going on almost teeters into uh, funeral doom at times. This is Forest Stream with um, Tears of Mortal Mortal Solitude. There we go. This is only a little promo copy. This album came out, I think, in 2004. And I've been telling myself for about 10 years now that I'm going to get myself a legitimate copy of this. I don't... I, I, you know what? At... When this video is over, I'm going to go order a legitimate copy of this. I mean, I, I've been telling myself that for at least 10 years. I love this release. They had an album that came out after this that uh, is very good as well, but it is very hard to come by. It was on Candlelight Records, and, and it's usually pretty pricey when I go looking for it. I think you can still find this one at a decent price, and I don't know why I haven't picked up a legitimate copy because I hate this little cardboard uh, slipcase. So... Mark my words, as soon as this video is over, I'm going to get me a, a legitimate copy of that one somewhere. eBay, Discogs, somewhere I'm going to get one. Uh, next up, I guess this is just the folk metal, Viking metal uh, portion of the collection. We have Forest King with Loreborn. This is a band, I believe they're out of Idaho, uh, of all places. Um, and they. this is a, a killer, killer release. It, it leans very heavily it has the little promo card on the inside it leans very heavily into uh, melodic death metal territory definitely has the the folk metal themes going on in this as well but i, I love this release fantastic stuff there from forest king and then i have the follow-up to that entitled crossing the murkwood 
I like this one as well, but I think Laura Bourne is uh, my favorite of the two if I had to choose. But I don't want to take anything away from Crossing uh, the Mirkwood because I enjoy this one quite a bit as well. This one leans a bit more into it like a blackened uh, death metal realm. Uh, it, it, a little, it, it sounds a little bit different. I, I can't exactly put my finger, finger on what it is, but it feels a little different sound-wise to me than Loreborn did. Uh, next up, we have a uh, atmospheric black metal, uh, folky atmospheric black metal EP. This came out in 2013. This is Forest Father with Hereafter. Uh, this features, it's kind of an international band. It has uh, the, I know one of the members is located in Chile. And uh, this features, it has uh, Jared Moran, Cave Moran. I, I talk about him, it seems like, in these videos all the time. It, this this guy is in so many projects it's ridiculous uh he does the drums and some other stuff in, in this in this particular uh release and this sounds a lot different than stuff that i've heard him from or heard heard him play in uh i know like when you hear him in something like uh flesh configuration or or flittering and then you hear him playing in something like this it's just it, he can do it all it, it's crazy but uh this is pretty good i mean it's it's atmospheric black metal at times has some straight folk music going on in that as well uh some some clean vocals it is a little bit different but it is a good listen uh next up we have some uh thrash metal groove metal out of norway uh this is forgery with harboring hate uh very catchy stuff very uh groovy riff heavy stuff Released on Candlelight Records, uh, don't see 2009. So this one's been out a while. They have uh, several other full links, but this is the only one that I, I've taken the the plunge on and actually picked up. Uh, next up, this is the only album that I own from this band. This is a uh, Forgotten Tomb with Love's Burial Ground, depressive black metal. This is when the band was still uh, doing uh, depressive black metal before they went kind of that the goth metal route but uh, it's pretty good the the vocals kind of can be a little off-putting at times but other than that like musically i do enjoy it but it it, it it's pretty good um i do enjoy this better than their kind of gothy stuff that they have going on now and then last but not least this is an album that that i like and i've heard it get dogged on a few times uh, it's very it's ambient type stuff. It's ambient slash it has some some doomy elements going on as well. And I think this could appeal to some people that are into black metal as well. This is Forless with uh, Tissues of Life. I know I've heard it dog on by a couple of people. I got this in a Regimental Records bulk lot that I picked up, and it turned out to be one of my favorite releases in that. So. I always have questionable taste anyway, but when I, I the people I will say that the people that I hear dogging this are are some of the people that feel like nothing is really good that came out after like the year 1999. Just because something is death metal or black metal or doom metal and it came out in the 90s does not make it good. There are some that that push stuff that came out in those time periods just because they came out on those time periods and, I, and i've listened to some of that stuff and it's not all good i mean there, there was some there was some junk that came out in that time period as well but i digress uh this is pretty decent i, I like it i mean there's some it, it's a little different there's some weird stuff going on on it but uh very moody type type music and, and i dig it so that's all for this video i don't know how many more of these i'll get done before before the move but i will try and then if they, we get a little gap going, uh, I w it it'll be explained in a video anyway. But uh, as, as for now, the plan is to keep them coming on Sundays. I don't know how long the move and all that will take, but I will try to keep them coming. And that's all I've got for today. Stay classy, stay metal, and I'll see you guys soon. I promise.